All right, uh, welcome everybody. Being six o'clock, I will call the June twentieth planning board meeting to order. Uh, roll call here. Let's see. We everybody sitting on the board is actual planning board members, so mm -hmm. we don't have any alternates tonight. No, he's not in tonight. So we get we have a quorum. We get a quorum, so we're good to go. Uh, first up, public comment. <laughs> Before you get to the public comment, Mr. Vice Chair, uh, I was informed uh, earlier today that Paul Steer uh, had uh, another engagement and couldn't come to, to the meeting tonight, so he'd like okay. to excuse. All right. Get the same to the chairman as well. And Bob, well, but he's an alternate, but his wife isn't doing well. Okay. Hi, I'm Sheila Delaney, and I live on 232 St. James. And my parents want to visit for the month of July and bring their trailer. And I understand there's a new rule about having a trailer. And I just want to find out what to do. Okay. So the it's 21 days, right? Yeah, they're going to be here for 30 days. Then the July. ordinance is 21. For 31 maybe. Uh, to address it, just the, the important thing is is actually about your septic. Right. It's making sure that you anything beyond the 21 days that if they're using and I don't even know if they're using the facilities, they may be using the house. Right. But it's to ensure that your septic tank, your septic tank, their septic tank in the trailer is taken care of. Some sort of arrangement is made. Right. If it's yeah. going to be full to be empty, then you can contact someone for that. Right. Larry, do you know? Um, for your for your possible convenience, uh, last month we had a gentleman come before the, the board, uh, and your situation is slightly different. But you might want to look at the notes for last month, uh, where it okay. says uh, we had a. Uh, this is for last month. We had a motion to approve subject subject to showing existing system is sufficient for the owner's use or uh, failing inspection. If you're not pumping into your own system. Right. Uh, to pump on conditions and documentation as are approved by the code enforcement uh, officer. Okay. So if you if you check with, uh, with, with Brian, that sounds uh, about right. Do we need to make a motion? We would. So so the question, so the two questions are, will they be using your facilities in your home? I imagine for showers they will be, but they'll be sleeping in there, so the and, and that's what, yeah. So showers, using the, the bathrooms, right. will they be using the house? Yep. So for the most part, I mean, they're going to be sleeping in the so. Right, and and, right. The, and that's the question, and that's yeah. kind of you oh, know I where the issue there. is. Okay. 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 If 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 they are going to be using the toilet in the shower facilities within the trailer right that's that's a concern okay but if they're not going to be using them whatsoever right and they're going to only only be using the facilities within your home that's that's a huge difference to yeah. us yeah yeah well, so i guess that I'm is and that is the you know what they would do is use ours okay if that's yeah. what they're going to do yeah i believe it's it's kind of a mute point yeah. um but if they come here and she informs you that, no, we're going to use the facilities within our trailer, right. you need to come back and talk to us. Okay. And well, that actually, well, the, well, he only needs to talk to Brian. Karen. Well, I don't know if we need to make well, a motion. Well, I think we, we need to make a motion. motion to go beyond right. the 21 right. days. Yes. yes. So so the, the concern is just to make sure that there is no raw sewage or whatever being right, dumped right, right. Yeah. Right. just out yeah. inappropriately yeah, is, is right. where this all came about right. so right. if if they're going to stay for the month of july using the facilities in your bathroom not right. using whatever they're bringing for a trailer right um, which, is, which is what they did the last time they i think we still need a motion so then question so then do we have the authority to make a motion to allow them mm -hmm. for the month right. of july so yes. I will uh, with make that, that condition motion. i will make the motion to allow them to have their trailer there for the month of July. With the condition that... I was going to say a second for discussion for a moment, if we could. 
Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I wanted to make sure is, like I said, if it, they get to monitor the tanks. Right. That's the real key. Right. Okay. Monitor the tanks. If the tanks are getting full, then they need to make arrangements for somebody to come in and pump the tanks, right. or to be able to go someplace to to, to make sure they them. properly drain the tanks. Yeah. That's the real issue, and it's and, and understand that you're doing what you can. So thank you for coming to yeah. us. That would be the only part that you need to monitor. And if okay. you're not sure who to contact, that would be the reason for contacting our call enforcement officer well, for that, I to find out who could pump that for you. So, you so your motion could include uh, the requirement for them to provide the receipt for the pump out to the call enforcement officer yep. during the month of July. Yeah, if, if necessary is the only reason right. I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I've been places where I've used my motor, my motor home or I went more than one place for right, a while before right. I had to empty it. So it's, that's all it would be. So we want to, to me, I would amend it to just say and ensure that if it needs to be pumped, that you, you do that properly and prove that. That's all. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, so all in favor? Sec second. Yeah, on the, on the amendment, we need a second, right? Second. Yep. Okay. Did you catch that, Jen? No. Uh, the yeah. amendment to ensure that it's done properly and Karen seconded the, uh, the motion? Then, then the if vote needed. would be for, for the approval of the amendment. Right. Yes. Okay. Voting on the approval of the amendment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Now we need to. <laughs> and now we get a vote on the motion as amended. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. It's the, thank you. All right. I was going to say we need to thank go you. through both steps. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. It's a we'll figure it all out. We watch the Absolutely. Video. All right. Are there any additional public comments? All right, I'm not seeing any. Um, I will move on to review, review and approval of minutes from June 6, 2023. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of Jan June 6. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. All right, now we will move on to the continued discussion of draft changes to the wetland conservation article so in the zoning. The DC meeting to order since we have a here. Okay. So, Jen, I'm calling the DC meeting to order at 10 after 6. Got it. Thank you. I'd already started. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, Bruce? Yeah, so uh, uh, the last time. I believe, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the last time we ended up uh, right around the top of page five uh, on the document, um, I think it was, uh, we did not quite get to 3A and 3B, uh, but the Conservation Commission Chair has requested that we, because she can't be here at future planning board meetings, she's requested that we move forward to the, to the idea of just protecting the, I think, seven? Four. Four. <laughs> there were seven, weren't there? But you picked the most important four. Yeah, there are 15, actually. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> priority buffers. Prior prioritize the buffers and have that discussion first tonight instead of picking up where we left off. Okay. Be, if I could before, yep. I know that I just wanted you to understand because you would ask what I had made for adjustments within the ordinance itself. It does have the area for the maps that you're going to address for those priority wetlands. Uh -huh. That was one of the things that was there. You would ask me that the last time, so that would be accounted for. I would think we would want to identify those. If I could take a minute to introduce to the um, planning board what our thinking was. Mm -hmm. um, the state of New Hampshire allows for towns to designate prime wetlands. And um, back in 2005, Moose Mountain's Regional Greenways did a study of all of its neighboring towns, including Milton, um, of which wetlands might be a good idea to, to designate as prime wetlands. Um, and so we have the results of that study. I think I sent those out earlier. Bruce forwarded mm -hmm. them to you, that, uh, four pages of summaries of, from that. Um, since then, although many towns, including Wolfboro, have over a dozen 
prime wetlands designated with a 100-foot buffer um, that the state recognizes. Since then, the state no longer allows or no longer de includes a 100-foot buffer on a prime wetland, but allows towns to individually increase their, set their own buffers and to designate their own priority wetlands as they wish. You can still designate prime, but it doesn't really have a, a lot of effect without a, a buffer. So we decided that we would ask the town to essentially designate our own priority wetlands and to increase the buffers for those because of the value specifically of those wetlands. And we looked back at the study, which had 15 um, significant wetlands, and they're all numbered on here. Um, in other words, these are all candidates to be prime wetlands. We, we looked at those and um, at the data. We haven't visited them all. Um, some of them are actually quite well protected insofar as they have conservation land around them. So we didn't choose those. Others have no conservation land, which means they could get development up to the 50-foot buffer. Um, and they also have very good um, attributes in their functions and values, the ones that Mark Jacobs talked about. So we came up with a list of four that we thought were the most important, being number, uh, I'll start at the top of the map, it's actually back in, backwards in numbers. Number 13 is, is on um, Willie Road behind houses. You don't see it from the road, but here's Guptill Road. If you drive in uh, Guptill Road, you can actually see it, but that's just got one house back there. Most of you probably haven't driven in there. So this is in Milton Mills, up along Willie Road, and we call it, uh, it's part of Miller Brook. It's an expanded area of, of Miller Brook, and we refer to it as Miller Pond. I, I think a lot of people refer to it that way. Another of the priority wetlands is number eight, which is another part lower down of Miller Brook. It goes behind the cemetery in, um, in, in Milton Mills and, and flows into the Salmon Falls River. And then there's this wetland actually is outlined. These all, all the wetlands are outlined in orange on this map. And it goes along the Salmon Falls River quite a ways. The town actually owns a parcel on it, which um, has um, across the road from the cemetery in which they're considering some recreation uh, development on. Then there's wetland number seven, um, which is we call fish pond, uh, colloquially known as that. Um, owned by, uh, not Mighty Joe, um, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, Yogi Bear, uh, uh, what's... Isn't that, that's owned, that, that there's someone else there that owns the waterfront <laughs> along Townhouse Road, mm -hmm. and then... Oh, it's, so this is the, so on Townhouse Road, you have the big Townhouse Pond, but then across the road, it looks like a, a, a big swamp and wetland. There's some open water, and most of the land around it is owned by Mighty Joe, but there are a few houses along it, so that's another priority one. Um, again, it has no conservation land around it, although it has the campground, but they are doing some development. Um, and then the last one is wetland four here at the bottom. We refer to this sometimes as the Heron Rookery or Lyman Brook wetland. It's um, behind Liberty Circle and has a lot of different um, parcels around it. A few of them have conservation easements on this side, and the town owns those conservation easements, but there are a lot of them that are unprotected, a lot of houses and big lots and some things. There, so there's a risk of development there. So those are the ones, and now, I mean, we saw these, what we did is we went through that list of all the functions and values, and looked at the ones that, that had high functions and values, we considered, we each came up with our own priorities in those. Um, so I'll let me remind you of some of the functions and values that are that Mark listed. <coughs> um, for example, sediment trapping and nutrient atten attenuation. That means that if pollutants get into that wetland, they get filtered out well. They don't end up in the stream. The wetland is always abutting a stream. Um, remember this. Except for vernal pools, which don't have an inlet and an outlet, wetlands are always on the side of a stream in our area of the country. It's not like the Great Salt Lake or something that doesn't dump out. Um, wildlife habitat is very important. Um, and sometimes for fish, some of them have good fish habitat, others don't, but they still are good for birds and amphibians and mammals. Um, we can 
considered also uh, shoreline anchoring and, and uh, flood attenuation, you know, how much the water can spread out so it doesn't flood the stream and the, and the downstream areas. So I'm just listing a few of those. But, so you can't average them. It depends what you're prioritizing. But this was what we came up with, these four. And we think that they are worth an extra amount of buffer. If you have 25 feet for the vegetated buff, naturally vegetated, it's not very far. What is it? It's about... I meant to bring my ruler. So maybe that's 25 feet. It's not very wide. It really isn't. Okay, maybe you can count eight, the panels. 12. 50 might be the width of this room. I mean, that's all we've got. It's not, not very much when you're thinking about a, a bit of forest right next to a wetland. It's okay. actually almost the entire length of the room. The room's about 28 feet. No. Yeah, yeah so there's also four foot panels. Right. So, so, so six right four foot panels makes 24 feet. Okay, so, so you that's got half 28, so 24. you got 30 foot. So, so, yeah. that, so from, from here, one, two, three, four, to sort of here. It's okay. 20 feet. Oh, it's 24 feet. 16. Four times four is 16. Sixteen is four feet. Yeah, oh, it's four. four. Sixteen feet plus the to the door. Yeah, to the oh, sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's well. I'm sorry. The room is thirty. Just so here. everyone knows, the I room is about thirty feet. feet. Okay. Okay. So I was I was underestimating. I thought my stride was three feet, but I guess it's only two. Okay. So it's about to here. So that's a little yep. better than I thought. Yeah. Uh, it's still not very wide when you're thinking about a wetland and um, something to protect it. That's the nat naturally vegetated buffer. What 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 buffer? That's the are one that is for? now mandated. Right. Twenty five. What, what are you looking for? Oh, we're asking for a fifty foot naturally vegetated buffer and a hundred foot um, for the planted vegetated. But no, but of course, there, remember, there are lots of um, conditional uses that can go in there, or lots of permitted uses. Excuse me. Um, that we'll get to actually in discussing. Um, so the permitted uses include um, recreation, agriculture, oh, yeah. what else was there? But there are a lot of things. Um, it's not as if you can't step, put a foot in it. Um, and those uses can go right up to the wetland? Uh, I believe so. Um, let's see, where is the, where's, where's that section? We haven't gotten to that discussion yet, and we did have a few suggestions on it, but mostly that it would remain the same. Permitted uses. Anything that doesn't involve the erection of a structure. Forestry. You can do forestry subject to the state rules, so you can cut trees in your buffer. Um, and that includes in the naturally vegetated buffer. Agriculture. Um, water <coughs> impoundment pending state approval. Drainage ways, wildlife habitat for development and management. Uh, de wildlife habitat development and management. I'm not quite sure exactly what that would encompass. Recreation, um, nature trails, snowmobile trails, um, et cetera. So that'll, that's when we get to section C. Um, okay. So we're those, that's what, in essence what we're suggesting. The town already has maps. I think I sent out the map, um, which looks a bit like this one. Um, but online, the map actually has the wetlands designated and numbered. This one doesn't have it. But I sent out a map that looks kind of like this um, with Bea Bruce a month or so ago. So we don't actually have to do any more. We don't have to pay anybody to map it. It's been done. That they're, they're numbers, they're on the town map. So, um, this one? so it would be a map. Um, no, that one actually is the kind of the equivalent of this, but I believe I sent the water resources map. Um, <coughs> it's, it's on the town, it's on the planning board website under the map. And it looks a lot like that one, except that each wetland is numbered the way that corresponding to the numbers on here. So any part of the ordinance could refer to those numbered and outlined wetlands. Now, if somebody was actually doing development next to it, they would have to get the delineation done because the map is different from the on-the-ground delineation. But that's, so that's what the Conservation Commission 
is asking you to consider. Um, of course, you would have a, a public hearing as part of all of this to hear the input from landowners. Did any other commissioners have something else they wanted to add? So you, just, are you looking for us tonight to make a decision on that specifically and to make a motion on that? Or are you looking for that to be incorporated to the overall editing changes of the well, well, in so, ordinance? Insofar as you're um, going through changes to the zoning ordinance, um, and adopting Humphreys or not, um, the way he's edited, um, a similar type, I, I don't know exactly how official this is, but sort of maybe a tentative, you know, I would like to hear, you know, I, I don't mean to just like adopt it, I'd like to hear your discussion, hear your questions, whatever, but yes, to tentatively put it in to a revised ordinance that then would go to a public hearing and get voted on. Um, and, but if you're not prepared to make that decision tonight, uh, you know, I accept that. Um, but it seems to me it's possible that I was hoping to be part of a discussion about it. Larry? That, uh, um, I think we, we have until, I, I will call it nominal January 1st uh, for the warrants to be drawn up and, yep. uh, and approved. And I know that uh, if they make eye contact with our with our town town planner, I know that Bruce uh, has the joy of many items that he is reviewing for the uh, <laughs> for the planning board. So, uh, if with the stuff that is on his plate uh, and the uh, the time that we are having uh, for getting things together so they make a neat package, if there are second warrant that might come out of Bruce's work, um, uh, my own reaction is that I would like to see what happens when uh, Bruce has had a chance to uh, polish uh, and fit what we're looking at uh, into the structure that's there. Does that, does that sound close? Yeah, so uh, the answer to that question is that, is the devil is always in, in the, the details. details. So I think tonight that you should probably come to a consensus on is A, whether or not you would like to add the prime wetlands, the four prime wetlands, into the wetland conservation ordinance or not, and B, settle on a, an increased buffer system that's fair to abutting landowners and to the priority of making sure the wetlands are preserved. So I'll take a second to tell you that I believe that a hundred foot, That's quite a bit. whatever it's called, uh, the unnatural vegetated buffer is way too much because there are, there are restrictions on what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, there, I believe, are conditional use permits that people would have to seek, uh, as they do now. Uh, I think that the, uh, you need to discuss whether or not doubling the naturally vegetated buffer, where not much can happen mm -hmm. to save the wetlands, doubling that is a great idea. Quadrupling the, the unnaturally vegetated buffer is a little bit too much in my opinion for this fairness aspect it would be of all parties. It would be doubling each of them. Pardon? It would only be doubling each of them. I, I thought I heard you say 50. Well 50 plus 50 equals 100. 100 okay. total. Okay 50-50. I thought you said a hundred. No, yeah, well, I I'm thought you said fifty and a hundred. It's, so it's usually I called. Misunderstood. It's usually called twenty-five and fifty, but it, it's because each one is twenty-five. It goes out to fifty total, right? Yeah, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're giving us a, a total. Yes. <clears throat> so, 
it, it really is it really is a thing that the board could do tonight is discuss the 50-50 that we're talking about instead of mm -hmm. what you have for what I consider to be regular wetlands, which is 25-50. 25-25 is what it is. Larry and then Humphrey, I think Larry had his hand up first, so. Um, I think, uh, Bruce, I think you said that the uh, the state has gotten out of the numbers uh, game uh, and left it to the uh, municipality uh, to. Well, with regard to prime wetlands, that's right. right. Yeah. Do you uh, have any sense of their reasoning for that reduction? I really don't know the answer to that, Larry, but remember, the, the state has pulled back from this idea of designating prime wetlands altogether. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if they, if they just got, got they, rid they of them. They still allow it, but it doesn't have much meaning because it doesn't have an automatic buffer, whereas it used to. And the towns that did prime wetlands in certain a certain time period, I think it was like 2009 to 2012, still have a 100-foot designated buffer on those prime wetlands. Mm -hmm. And any town can also designate their own buffer around their own wetlands. Um, although the prime wetlands are recognized by the state. If we de designate priority wetlands in our town, they're not particularly recognized as anything different by the state. It's our own town recognition. Right. Humphrey? My only question in looking at the map, I mean, when we're talking about the wetlands, and of course you're looking at, it's hard to tell on this map just how big an area are we really talking, you just see the number yeah. in the middle. I think that really needs to be defined because like 13 is pretty straightforward with the coloring, I believe. Yeah. You know, but when you're down along the wetlands for eight. I, uh, I can show you, if it goes from here down, now this is all the Salmon Falls River. Right, but you're on the main it, side. It, how are we gonna? No, this is the New Hampshire side. Um, it, well, it goes along. along that's goes northeast. Through, that's through the northeast. Of the river. That right there is the is the is not the New Hampshire side. Okay. That's what I'm right. getting I, at. Okay. That red is on the main side of the is on the main side of the Salmon Falls River. The line is very close to the New Hampshire border, to the yeah. to the New Hampshire shore. So, I think because I Virginia, I really believe as Bruce said that we need to look at the more prime wetlands, and I think that doubling the the naturally vegetated um, buffer is, is important, but we got to really know exactly how much of that area is impacted within the New Hampshire, and it looks like it's a very small area just behind the cemetery. So it's like we're not really building right behind the cemetery other than the cemetery work itself, right? It, yeah, it probably is clearer on the w water resource. Yeah, but anyways, like I said, because I'm looking at it trying to find out, all you see is, an, is, a, is the wetland designation is eight, and you go, it looks like it's almost yep. all of the northern part of Northeast Pond. You've got a lot of homes and things like that that could be impacted by what's out there if that became the case. Yes. So you really, yeah. we really need to understand where that, where that line is. We, yeah, we, we are, I'm sorry to interrupt, we are looking at a map where north is at the top, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's White Swales up here. Yep. Right, then, then the, uh, what is confusing is that the little uh, almost the uh, almost a volcano uh, crater there in, in the mid midline of the, the map starts out on the uh, New Hampshire side and then crosses over. Uh, I'm sorry, not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that? Uh, I can't tell what is land and what is water, but uh, yeah. Uh, do do I understand that for the wetlands? Uh, we're labeled number three. Uh, that is the right in the mid midline of the of the map, horizontal midline of the map. That says the number, number three. Ranch River area. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that that is roughly where lower. That's, that's the Branch River. Right. What's that? Area coming into Salmon Falls. Right. Oh, okay. Two right. and three. Branch. Branch. Oh, that is the branch. In. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Right. Fine. Right. And in fact. You can't see it from there. There is a separation between this wetland and this wetland right here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see those two lines, but this wetland 
um, which actually goes down to here and goes all the way up here. This one long one. Right, right. Yeah. right. But well, the, like we can only enforce the part that's the right. The right hand right. side of it is unimportant, and the left hand side uh, is or is not uh, a prime New Jersey suburban house house lots. That's a joke. Um, there, are, so th there are parcels along here, and there are, there are some houses along here. That's in Maine. There really no, isn't. No, this is New Hampshire. This is New Hampshire here. There, yeah, this but that area over there really doesn't this, this have. Is Maine. Yeah. Correct, but that area you're pointing at in Wetland Eight, yes. I don't know of any real housing over in that area, except except maybe right, right at the edge of right at the edge of Milton Mills, right. where it's where it's on the. Or it's Roger Libby's house is along here. Um, on the brook, up this further. This is right across from Paul Steer. This is that's where this that's is. up for that's up further on Appleby. That isn't down where you're pointing into the lake area and into the Salmon Falls River. They're on the brook that feed. They're on Miller Brook. This this is Mil this is Miller Brook. It comes in right, and their property and is off of Appleby Road and uh, and with Miller Brook. It is not where you're pointing on Northeast Pond. That area your finger is right now is Northeast Pond. No, this isn't the pond. This is the river, I think. Well, all it's all river. This is this is no the solid blue. It's really confusing. The, what does the dark blue mean? Aquifers. This dark blue is noting an aquifer. This is not lake. The light blue is the lake. So well, I'm sorry, that was confusing. We, we, we really need to look at the other I, so, Yeah. However, we need to see the real that, defined area. The, well, the it's, uh, if we could hold up this map, this might be. Well, yeah, but that's not going to be any clearer at this point to find well, out shows, exactly where it is it, on it the wall. It shows it in pink. Where is it? I see again. Mr. Larry. Chair, uh, given the difference between the dark blue, which is the aquifer, uh, which uh, for my money, or should be at least cross-hatched green so that I know I'm not drowning, uh, compared to the actual blue and the impact of, of stuff which is actually, or maybe not, on the main side. Uh, and I just went and counted tiles up here, and we have about 35 feet uh, this way. So if we call this uh, 50, which is only uh, 15 feet more, we're talking about an actual distance of about where that central projector is, uh, south is the old line, and central uh, projector north would be the additional uh, protection for prime wetland. And that that seems pretty reasonable, but uh, I, I do not like the significant wetland study map because it, it is- blue. It's hard to, it's hard to understand it's where the river ends and yeah. the lake begins yeah. in many cases. Yeah. I have a couple, of, well, first off, 25 feet is from me to that wall. Yep. Okay. That's 25 feet. Now, I have two questions, though. Um, on the buffer zones, just so I'm clear, because there's been different numbers bouncing around, I want to yeah. make sure I have this I'm right. Guiding. Thank you. Natural vegetative, you want to go from 25 to 50. Correct. Okay, that one aside. The next one is now 25, right? Currently, yeah. Currently the non-natural whatever right. is 25. You want to make that 50 as yes. well, yes. not not 100. No, no, okay. we want to make the total 100. Okay, when, when you were first saying it, it sounded like you wanted to make I'm, I'm 50 sorry. and 100 for a total of 150. Yeah. No. Okay. I just had to get that clip. Does that help everyone else too? Why do I, do that? I, w I wasn't clear on it. No. Secondly, and this might be a better question for you, are there any prime wetlands listed now in the zone? No. Okay. Not, not in our time. Uh, Wolfboro has more than a dozen, for example. I know that. Uh, I just want to know if we like, had any we listed there. No, no, no. Okay. The only other question I have on these prime wetlands, are, it, are any of them currently on personal property? Oh, yes. And oh, they all are. Everybody owns. Okay. Um, well, they could have been on town land, but yeah, right. um, of town land, but mostly. I think mostly I'd like to understand the impact to the property owner before, you know, I. You've got homes in kind of Milton Mills that don't even have fifty feet from the edge of the water to the other side of the property. Um, I, yeah, I don't think that's the case on the ones on that. Well, the, I'm not saying on that particular spot, but there are places in Milton Mills right now. Just above that, backwards. And so on which the street? whole piece of property, right on Main Street, 
and that's still in the Salmon Falls, where the whole depth of the property is only about 50 feet. It's not even 100 feet, oh, okay. or it may only be 100 feet, so literally you could be taking a piece of property that someone's on and designate the okay. entire thing as a buffer zone. I think that's up in this area. I can no. see the little tiny yeah. house left But it's a little there. bit right about where you've got Wetlands 8 started, because I agree with you. The confusing part when I qu quickly looked at the map was the aquifer looks like part of the lake, but right. because I know this is the Branch River down in here, but that's the river. So when you're looking at the pink on that, that's literally just the width of the river, the river and a little bit of the right. the shoreline. And, and, so, and if you, I mean, you're welcome to come examine it. It's um, uh, for these house lots along. Yeah, that's Appleby lots. Road. And, uh, that, that's is that Apple Appleby. Yep. Appleby Road, which is where the the Libby's are and all that, and behind it's Miller Brook. On that's yeah. where they're running into. So this is this is Willie Road here. This is Appleby. This is Appleby. Hmm. This is Willie. Okay. But uh, I'm saying when you were talking anyway, about the Libby's, um, they're on Appleby. That's why I'm right. They're on, it up. which means they're they're yeah. on Appleby. They're in here. Yeah, and there, these lots are much bigger than these little tiny lots, which are not affected by that designation. Would not, would not be. Uh, so, so I guess my my thing here is, don't get me wrong, I completely understand the importance of the wetlands, but it's almost like we have so many. I mean, the 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 lake is our biggest. What I want to say, uh, natural resource in the town and, and you know for the most part it's way overbuilt than what it should be um, and there's really nothing we can do about that at, at this point so you know and I'm just trying to think in fairness of all the property owners I'm not sure that designating for the wetlands as uh, prime wetlands is, is really being fair to everybody across the community because I think at, for one way or another you could designate that each wetland is equally as important for for a certain aspect of, of those functions that um, we look for in the wetland so I get I guess that's just why I'm a little hesitant here I mean so right now we're going to be at if you add the total we're still 50 feet for, for all wetlands yeah. Uh, Larry? Uh, well, the, the, the flip side of, side of that uh, is that um, uh, everybody should have their fair, their fair chance to overbuild, too. Or we could designate a 100 foot buffer for all wetlands. <laughs> yeah, would, that would be I mean, that, of course, was, I don't remember Figures. when this ordinance was passed, there was no buffer before about 2000 and Milton implemented a buffer at that time and that changed everybody's situation right yep. all landowners who have wetlands I mean and this is that would be 15 um, plus probably others that are 3,000 square feet that um, we don't even see listed on here so it's been done in town to impact many many landowners with a new buffer um, Humphrey and Larry yeah all right, to me, I, I understand the whole intent. I mean, I really do. I live right on the water, and I can tell you right now, my house is within, my porch is within 50 feet of the water, okay? House is 12 feet back, so si about 62 feet away from the water. Wayne can tell you the same thing with his. Th this is almost designated 100 feet back, and I'm not saying things could, some things couldn't be done in there, but in a real prime wetland, I have to agree with Bruce. I could, I could honestly agree with double in the naturally vegetated area for property that hasn't been developed at this point. But to me, doubling up the, the rest of it, it, I don't think, I don't see that as warranted. Currently, it's 25 and 25, which means 50 feet. We're gonna double it out to a naturally vegetated state where up until this point, you get people that had to have 25 feet and then they had something else that just allowed filtration of water and everything else some other means. So to add an, you know, you're basically adding 50 more feet to what I just think is going a little more than necessary when it comes to the unnatural part. I would go, I could see the, the 50 of naturally vegetated 
and maintain the 25 so that anything that needed to have some sort of some sort of vegetated swale that we put in ourselves just gives you an additional an additional space but just adding the vegetated swale definition of it gives us the 25 feet added to doubling the naturally vegetated area in those and I think that gives us the additional protection we haven't had Larry that, uh, I, will, I will try to be to be more serious and not everybody have a chance to do the most damage they can because it's been done before uh, back in New York State uh, there was something called segmentation uh, and you were prohibited uh, by uh, carving the mountain down into a flat land one year at a time and you had to explain what your final uh, goal was for your, your development um, so if there have been people who have come to this planning board who have flat cut their property done nothing with it for a year and on the 366th day came in to develop the property because they were not bound by any controls the town had for preserva preservation uh, of the natural vegetated uh, growth on that property. Um, the other thing is that a property with a wetland, uh, the regulations could be, could be written in such a way that the impervious surface <coughs> Uh, of that, that 50, 50 feet is not naturally vegetated, uh, has to be done uh, to the standards for impervious uh, surface uh, that the, the town has in place prior to any action being taken on the land. Uh, and that, I think, <coughs> could uh, uh, temper the, the vegetated versus the non-vegetated uh, and would prevent somebody from, uh, from taking it down flat, and then saying, oh, it's been like that for, for a year. I don't, don't know if that helps the discussion. But it, it, it uh, um, but with extreme weather coming, uh, I'm on the ridge. You may have seen my driveway a month ago. It wasn't there. Such a load of water came all the way from Summit House which is uh, where Winning Blaze is, all of that water comes south. The, uh, the uh, channel, the side swale ditching was not sufficient, took out my culvert uh, and came uh, across and down into uh, my wetland, which did help uh, temper it. And uh, I don't know whether I'm a, uh, a prime or just uh, a swamp. <coughs> there can be a lot of water coming. I would like to see that that infiltration, that turbidity, that silt carrying not reach the, the through points. And I think that's where we basically, sorry to cut it, but I think that's where we're saying keep double the vegetated, the naturally vegetated space will help with that. And I think maintaining the 25 feet of the vegetated swale or a swale that we <coughs> set up such as that. Uh, which we have, I mean, currently it's, it's 25 and 25. I just think doubling the naturally vegetated to 50 and keeping 25 is, is basically giving you a, a pretty ex extreme change to that area. You know? um, yes, uh, remember it means, however, that somebody of course can then put their building on the edge of that 75 foot, um, mm -hmm. instead of having to have it back 100. And, and that's, that's why I'm making a comment. My house is built within well, 60 some odd feet I, I of the what, pond and, lots, lots and, of people and the issue yeah. comes down to what I have for bushes, trees and things like that within 150 feet have to be maintained it's the same type of thing, you have to maintain certain natural things without going to the wetlands bureau mm -hmm. uh, and I just think we are doubling by double, because I, I agree with you if you're doubling it in there, you're already the vegetated part, that right there was going to give you a buffer to those wetlands oh, yeah. it's going to really make a difference <laughs> I, I, I certainly agree that it would make a big yeah. difference, and, and I'd rather have that than, than, yeah. than nothing. <laughs> Larry? I don't know. Uh, a question for the town planner. Uh, how would, do you think, if it's not too broad a question, 
uh, somebody uh, with a home which has been in the prime in a prime wetland uh, set out <coughs> surveyed uh, and any soil scientist can be done those are all preconditions uh, how would shoreland protections cut in in a prime wetland in terms of uh, roof edge uh, drip uh, drive gravel driveway things things like that it's gotta be can way. that can that be slid in um, Larry the first thing I want to say <coughs> is that uh, shoreland protection regulations and weapons protection regulations are not the same right and they, they don't I don't even believe that they dovetail together. <clears throat> now, is your question, does your question have to do with existing uses <clears throat> that might be in a buffer? Uh, and you're asking if we can retroactively go back and make them do uh, <clears throat> filtration drip edge trenches of, from the, uh, off the roof overhang and, mm -hmm. and, and other, uh, techniques for assisting with stormwater runoff? Yeah. Uh, I think right away we should try to avoid uh, re making requirements on people who already developed their properties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you were in a, that's a dangerous, dangerous Avenue to go down. I would say we weren't asking for anything retroactive. I mean, it's, if it's there, uh, it's pre existing to this ordinance and it's not affected by the ordinance. So, can I ask a question? If there is, say, a house already in what now we're considering a buffer zone and they want to add a 12 by 12 deck off the back of their house, yeah. does that mean they can't do that? Where, where is the deck going to be located? It's going to be in the buffer because their Which whole house buffer? is in the buffer. Which buffer? The the now fifty feet. Okay. So. Well, of course, it would be. Let me answer the question first, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, if it's in the new instead of twenty five foot naturally vegetated first twenty five feet, and we're going to extend it to fifty from the wetland the edge of wetlands, that first fifty feet is that naturally vegetated one. If the proposal to make an addition uh, to an existing house is there, they would have to go to the Zoning Board of Adjustment and ask for a variance from the requirements not to build anything in that buffer. If the addition that you're talking about is in the next 25 feet or 50 feet, if, depending on what you do here, then there might be a requirement to do certain things to make it better for the wetlands that's that far away, such as what Larry's talking about, if you get a conditional use permit from the planning board. That's how that could be written. Done, it's done like that in many communities. And in fact, we have, must have something like that already because some houses existed right up at the edge of the wetland before this That's whole ordinance was ever passed. And so they're now already in a buffer. So the, the, the situation already exists in town. It's yeah, this ordinance was right. passed in March of 2005. Okay. So right. lots and lots of houses were already built. Right. But this so change is probably likely to affect a few more. Several more, possibly. We're not really sure at this time. Well, uh, you're asking for the expansion for the four prime only. Is that correct? For the four, yes. And I would like to call them priority because they would not be state designated prime wetlands. So they would be our own, um, priority. Only those four priority. Yes. Are yes. you looking for the additional twenty five feet? Correct. Because there's a lot of other yes. wetlands that still. Are subject to the 25 feet. Yes. <coughs> so, the fish pond. Let's talk about that. It's one I'm more familiar with. Mm -hmm. We have property in there right now that they don't even have 100 feet from that. That 
there's a number of houses right there. There's the individual that owns the land all along Townhouse Road, whose house and pool and everything else are all within just a few feet of the water. Um, and his whole, his entire piece of property along Townhouse Road is only about five to 15 feet in depth. Um, where he owns his land and everything else is all along his land goes all the way around the fish pond <coughs> and if he hasn't done any developing in there other than what he's already got his house is already right in, in less within so, so his house is with, I know it's not changing existing I'm just giving you a for instance mm -hmm. his house is within about 20 feet of the water right, so mm -hmm. he's already okay. in a buffer yeah I did I'm getting what I'm getting at is but so isn't the next three houses up as you're going up past St. James and continuing down Townhouse uh, Road, those houses also that are on Fish Pond would never meet those requirements that are currently buildable lots. And the campground has already gone, and I mean, and I'm not putting saying in favor or not in favor of what the campground's doing, but all that land around the campground, this also has that same effect of changing it. Anything that they already had for plans and all that become a part of it. But I'm just trying to put this reality piece in why I'm saying I don't disagree with the doubling the naturally vegetated thing for any existing lots and all that. Nothing's been developed. But to then also double the other swale, you're talking about, in this particular case here, this one individual who owns five acres along that couldn't build anything today if well, we did that. He, he, he'd have to get a variance. The odds are he wouldn't get it at all because it was all within the 50 feet of vegetated area. So a variance on that would be most likely turned down. That's what I'm getting at. So he owns roughly five acres of land around Fish Pond that if he hadn't developed it already, couldn't even use the land. So that's how much doubling this can affect some people. Larry? Oh, then. Uh, one of the things that we, that we don't know, based on what Humphrey just said, is we don't know the size of the universe, uh, or more colloquially, uh, how many ox are going to get bored um, uh, if this goes in. And we do have the existence of the ZBA as a safety valve, uh, so I could see a gentleman in that five-acre um, situation uh, coming to the ZBA and the ZBA might say, uh, oh, okay, Joe, uh, you get a one shot for your five acres. You have to agree that you get your one house and the rest will always, always be and, and uh, get a balanced safety valve for something like that, not speaking of any particular yep. individual, period. Hold on. I don't disagree. Yep. We have more work? Oh no, absolutely. I, like I said, I know we're really, I'm just trying to get down to whether or not we can even agree on do we double the naturally vegetated area. I think that was the first thing Bruce put up there. And then go further to find out more how much it's going to impact things before we go and look at the second part of it. And, uh, and this is it. still going to go, requires a vote of the people. Oh yeah, it's going to go into so, the ordinance. That's all, but can we, but, I mean, whether we can agree to just move, you know, to go to that point is what I think we need to work on. But do we have a uh, reasonable consensus that uh, for the vegetated uh, buffer as it exists, uh, apart from, from the tennis court that somebody may put in, that it, does, it seems reasonable uh, to protect what is in place and has not yet been built on for expanding the 50-foot vegetated? Only for the four? For the priority. Priority for locations. Yeah. Okay. So that's 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 a peg that Bruce can hang stuff uh, uh, off. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'll just. I have just the issue where, like, with those houses that you're talk, talking mm. about, we can't take away something that's already right. existing. But, but then they can't do any more with their property. That's. Well, unless they get a where it is. Which you probably won't get. In relation you know, to you the don't know. Of the You're right. You don't, you don't know. know. So that's what I have. And <coughs> that's the issue I have. Yep. So you're not you're not taking away all the rights. No, right. Not in any case, because in one case, uh, they, uh, any 
property owner has the has the right to request relief uh, when uh, they've been uh, when it looks like they have lost some of their rights. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I, the point I was trying to make earlier was, with the abundance of wetlands we have, I don't think we're in any, any immediate danger of losing what the wetlands are providing, whether this goes in or doesn't go in, because it's only it, it's four that were chosen out of several. For now. For at this time, I'm just saying, it's just, it seems like, and, and part of those four, I mean, they are heavily developed or in areas where, like, the cemetery isn't going to get, get developed any further. So that, that's, that's where my reservation is coming from. It just seems to me like it's, it's, it's singling out certain property owners, and that's, that's my concern with it. I, I would hate to see the whole ordinance not pass because of that when we trying to make a bunch of improvements mm -hmm. because we're singling out a small group. And my yeah. question to you, Virginia, is <clears throat> which we would should explain to you know the voters or the residents, mm -hmm. why did you choose these four locations? What are they protecting mm -hmm. that's different than all the other wetlands? Um, I can tell you in general I did not bring all the specifics. I will say that Miller Pond, or here, does have um, land along, property along it that is at risk of development. Right now there's one um, appeal for a variance to the um, ZBA to develop one of the 12-acre pro property along it. Um, and along a part, right along on an edge, and the buffer is only 50 feet. If we expand it to 75, it might actually prevent some of the development right along it that they're hoping. This is. Um, but but why do you? So, why, so, why, so this why? specific risk of d development and the and the the big Libby property behind it is also at risk of development eventually when Patricia Le Libby um, passes on. So that would give more protection for that wetland. Although we we're mostly looking at how well that wetland functions, and we don't want to <coughs> lose. In principle, we don't want to lose the functioning of this wetland because of development along. And development, of course, is the biggest risk. Um, I'm not looking to prevent people from expand, putting a deck up. I'm looking to keep new <coughs> houses right along the edge of the wetland, keep them out. Um, so just playing devil's advocate here, that development, that one development that you're talking about, if that was to go through and be put in, what has that wetland lost? It, it would be probably subject to a lot more erosion <coughs> coming down. There's a pretty steep slope going into it. It could get a lot more pollution into the wetland. It could lose wildlife habitat. It could get 10 pollutants downstream. Um, it could, those would be the it ones It could, but ones what, <coughs> what well, is it know, actually it's gonna, it's not, and, know, and I'm just trying to play devil's it's, advocate it's, here. It's, it's the risk, we, you never know exactly. Um, but, but we currently have a significant amount of land in conservation in this yes. town. Yes. And again, I'm not against conservation land. Don't, I, I don't want anybody to think that because that, that isn't, I'm just trying to play mm -hmm. devil's advocate, advocate here and, and try to get the balance, mm -hmm. the balance right. Yeah. It's, it's and the two questions I have is, does this wetland sit over an aqu I can't say the word. Aquifer? No, this, no, one aquifer. Does. this one doesn't. Does it feed? Milton Three Ponds at yeah. all? Yeah, right straight down Miller Brook into the Salmon Falls and Milton Three Ponds. Yeah. <coughs> that would be my only concern in protecting that particular wetland is that it does feed into Milton Three Ponds. Right. Is is my take on part of but what you're saying in the in the development yeah. piece? Without changing anything. Because I'm not saying I'm not, in fact, you, you already heard me, I could see the doubling the naturally vegetated area. Without doing any of that, if the ordinance is followed for building, buildability, following the wetlands uh, restrictions and everything else that are in the ordinance today, and they did develop that area and everything's met according to this, you're really not <coughs> putting that at more risk. 
<coughs> than what we've had all along. Oh, Excuse I, I me. Want a cough drop? <coughs> I'm going to step up and get a drink. But putting it to 100 feet takes away too much from people. <coughs> I'll be right back. Wow. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I understand, you know, we want to protect wetlands. Um, and I, I guess I'll make the unpopular statement is I don't want to put a buffer in just to prevent someone from developing their land. Well, if you do that, we have just de 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 devalued those pieces of land. Well, I, it's, it's not preventing it. It's preventing it that close to the wetland. I mean, that's well, you had said that that 12 acre, if we do that, then that'll prevent them from oh, developing. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. So we have just that. devalued they can, they that. Can still get, they can still squeeze a house in on another so. spot on the... On their, they just they want to put it right next to the wetland for the scenic view. Um, and then with the Libby's is, land, you had said that that would prevent that from being developed in the future. And, and it, it, it certainly wouldn't prevent that. So from I mean, being it would add again add more protection for the wetland. That's all. I mean, he's got seventy acres. Or that was his mother. Patricia Libby has seventy acres. It would just add more protection. Um, and on this wetland, there's a place. There's a little squeezed place that's really. It doesn't show it on this because this is an old map. Um, yeah, it's very thin. Next, to it. If, if they might not be able to fit a house out on the or very thin part of that parcel that's right next to the wetland where they can barely squeeze it up there. That that might not fit anymore. Although it may not anyway. Um, I, I don't. You know, I, it would take an engineer to, and surveyor to get it off. But they, there's still other places on them. Just want to be careful not to devalue the land. So that they can't. So it's not. Attractive. So it's unusable, right. basically. In that regard, my point was coming back, and I'm sorry about that. I swallowed wrong, and it was like it was kicking <laughs> my backside. But doubling this and keeping the 25 uh -huh. gives you 33 percent better chance of not having any kind of issues going on. And if the ordinance is followed accordingly, then you're not going. I mean. I don't want to sit there and say, yeah, we don't really want to develop that area because there's a brook. <clears throat> there are people who pay prime money to want to be along a brook because it's a beautiful place to be. I pay pretty good money to be along the water because it's a beautiful place to be. You know, we're not supposed to be building this to the point where it's like artificially creating more conservation land. The idea is to protect what's there. <coughs> um, can I tell you that? A workshop a couple weeks ago, Sunday. June second, oh. and the state climatologist <coughs> spoke about what's going to happen in New Hampshire and New England over the next 20, 30 years. If you take a look at precipitation, then what's going to happen is precipitation is going to decrease, but the number of major storms are going to increase. All right. What that means if you have wetlands is that the sponge. All right, they act as a sponge. And it's, if, if we have, like we had a couple weeks ago, five inches of rain that flooded the end of Micah Terrace and a lot of homes, all right, what wetlands do is they help, they help go and mitigate that. The other thing is, when if you take a look at temperature, we're going to get warmer. I know that's a debate. Is, are we going through a climate change? The answer is yes. So, for instance, the number of days that are over 90 have increased from 9 to 15 in the last five years, all right? Uh, ice out and ice in, those dates we know have changed. So a lot of things are gonna change in the natural landscape, which you people, the town, <coughs> everybody, is gonna have to go eventually, go and um, take a look at it. And there may be a time where people are told, and you know, you have to go and put on trip line trenches along the roof. You take a roof that's 40 feet by, uh, 25, I believe it's something like 30 to 35,000 gallons in one inch of water flows off that roof. Now, if you're on the ponds, it goes into the pond, the pond rises. All right? If you're in a wetland area, the wetlands, particularly if you have a vegetative buffer, that helps go and absorb some of that moisture. Mm -hmm. All right? So things are going to change drastically, I think, climatically, all right, in the next 25, 30, 50 years, definitely in 50 years. Um, the, the climatologist went and said that if we do nothing with greenhouse emissions, that by the turn of the century, the average temperature in New England will go up 
between five and seven degrees. That'll have catastrophic events in terms of vegetation, wildlife, you name it, right? So what does that have to go and do with what we're looking at? The wetlands that we're talking about are four that each of us went and evaluated for its characteristics of, you know, wildlife. Is 25 feet enough, you know, of a buffer to prevent wildlife to get in the corridor they need? Probably not. Is 50? Better, all right? Is 100? Better. But I agree with Humphrey and with what Bruce has said that, you know, we don't want to go and negatively impact in, in some instances where people can go and build. In other instances, maybe we should have. Maybe the town of Milton should have said at the end of Micah Terrace, no, you can't go and put those cottages that are two feet or three feet above the mean high water mark. Because sooner or later, and it doesn't take a hundred year flood, it takes five inches of rain, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of weeks ago to go and flood that area. And those events are gonna happen more often. I do think we should protect our wetlands. All right, I, I agree that and anything we can get, uh, I think is, is gonna help our wetlands and help our town. So to go from 25 to 50 on the on vegetated um, forested areas, that's an improvement, all right? I'm concerned about, you know, I, my number one priority was fish pond. That was one of the ones I thought, all right? It's, a, it's one that everybody sees. Every camper that goes into Yogi Bear, all right? People that go St. James, Micah Terrace, all right? Lakeside, whatever. Right? That's that that's a wetland and I think it could be a wetland at risk, all right, because of development along it. It's a beautiful wetland, all right? So the idea is to go and protect some of our, you know, most important wetlands. The one up in the middle of Brook, that is a beautiful chunk of, of land that has a very valuable wetland because it feeds into our river system, which feeds into Milton Three Ponds. Anything we can do to protect that? is something that we should be considering, all right? So, but I, I was, we, we were all sitting there in this meeting, and as the climatologist is speaking, we're all going, we're on camera, right? Yep. No, everybody was going, holy moly, that's not what I was gonna say, all right? But everybody was saying, this, it was scary. Now, you gotta say, yeah, but it's real. Be yeah, straight, all right? That is real, and people better begin to go and take notice to it, because as I said, there are a bunch of homes that are on the terrace that were on the block, right? And now our wetlands, I don't think we want to do anything that's going to endanger them. Mm -hmm. My thing. Yeah. So, so the, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'm always in the spirit of compromise, moving forward with what's in the best interest of the town as a whole. Uh, I, I really support the idea of, of uh, increasing the naturally vegetated buffer the first 25 feet to 50. And I I believe that the next 25 feet, which <clears throat> the way I look at it, that is, uh, that's a buffer uh, that you could do uh, other things in. You may even be able to build something only if you can prove uh, by criteria that you meet before the planning board to obtain a conditional use permit from this board. Uh, that allows people to still do many of the things that they want to do on their own property. In the case of undeveloped land that really might lie completely in this new buffer, whether it's the 50 or the 25 that I'm recommending, th that really becomes an issue for the Zoning Board of Adjustment and right away you will see that there's a hardship that's related to the land and related to how the ordinance is written. So that really becomes a no-brainer for the members of the Zoning Board if they do their job right. It's a hardship and they should get their variance but then the variance that they get can be tightly controlled. You're going to do this, you will do the drip edges, you will not do that. Uh, and, and the way I see this is, we're not really infringing on many rights at all on this. It really is uh, a matter for uh, the, public, the public good. And you, you hit the, the nail on the head, 
if we preserve our wetlands and the weather changes and it rains more and more or more often, those wetlands, one of the prime purposes of those wetlands, among several, is that it's a place for the extra water to go. And, and that's really important, especially in Milton and, and in many areas. Mr. Chairman, but, um, to, to that of my own personal experience in this last uh, he the heavy, heavy rain from about a, uh, a month ago, uh, I have an old tote road that uh, crosses the swamp from west to east into what is now uh, Cynthia, as used to be uh, backwoods of mine. Uh, and <coughs> usually the, uh, the level of that the hemlock swamp uh, is about uh, nine or 12 inches below the road and never changes. It's just a, just a simple uh, grassy tote road, maybe about 10 feet wide. I had leaf and twig garbage at the edge of the, uh, of the road for where the water had filled up that wetland in the last uh, <coughs> rain. That's how much, uh, and you figure that's about, uh, I would say about three, somewhere between three and five acres uh, of the of swamp, and it came up uh, about six, six inches, and you can do the math on an acre. That's, that's not so in general, is the board the consensus that we're good with going, <coughs> taking the first 25, increasing it to 50, and leaving the last 25 alone? So the overall would be, if you add the two together, it's going to be 75. That's not a full consensus. Okay. I didn't hear your comment. It is not a full consensus. And, and uh, I think I did hear that you are willing uh, to do the priority or prime, if you want to call them, the four wetlands and have me uh, take a stab at, at doing the actual writing of the ordinance, because that's what I said was the devil's in the details on this. That is also not a full consensus. <laughs> and I, and I, I guess for for me personally, so if you know, we could have more detailed explanation of why those four wetlands were chosen and specific details on each one of why. Because I don't even think it's it's not only important for us to understand, but I also think it's important for when it goes to the voters to understand why those four were chosen. And I think with that additional detail, it'll be more understanding. Um, well, from the voters then. Because I believe that it needs to be added in, as a paragraph uh, under purpose in your ordinance itself. Mm -hmm. and, and it needs Five to be weapons, made. This is why we're doing it. That's the purpose of this mm -hmm. ordinance. So let me ask this. We could draft an ordinance specifically for those priority wetlands, correct? Well, I think it does belong in this article, though. I think being mentioned in here, but I'm saying if we put the specifics, because I agree with Ryan's comment, if we rewrite this, the, the ordinance to all wetlands and we're trying to sell it, we may end up losing it because of part of it. And if we put it into two distinctly different pieces, we may get the major benefit of what we're trying to do and then find out if through the Conservation Commission, right, I see the priority the land piece. I just think if we do it in two changes that way in the warrant, that yeah, would I mean, be better we off. We could write two, <coughs> two separate warrant articles. Yeah. Correct, and I think that would be the right way. Then it comes back down to like Tony's comment because we're really working on the wetlands piece as we've been doing it, addressing it here, and we can then turn around and find out what we've got for consensus afterwards on the Let me bring you a draft of, yeah. of, of the whole thing together yeah. once you finish the rest of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's which we still have more to do. Right. few meetings to get <clears throat> through that, yep. uh, and I'll work on the draft as we, as yep. we uh, move along. Yep. All right, Larry. Then, uh, do I have the, the sense then that the purpose could, will, or might include uh, 
such comment as uh, the significance of the prime wetlands because of their capacity to work as a sponge, because of their direct connection uh, to the health of the three ponds, and, it was, uh, and at the same time uh, to ensure that uh, the, it is understood that the zoning regulation themselves for such variances are given makes use of best management practices uh, for building in wetlands such as but not limited to uh, drip edge specialized plantings and such. And I think a phrasing like that uh, would protect the, the point of view that, that Tony is coming from, uh, that it is not an unreasonable t uh, uh, taking, but just good building. Uh, I believe you're spot on on that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you go back when, where we stopped last time, Bring, it, bring us back where we were on the comments. Yep. Under permitted uses, it says, which is where we had actually stopped. Permitted uses within the naturally vegetated buffer, it says permitted uses following best management practices is what I had put in specifically for words, shall be as follows, and then the comments that we were doing because we need to address that anyway. So that was something that I had put in and we had actually addressed that in the last meeting. I, mean, I, I also <laughs> like what Ryan was saying was, I also like what Ryan was saying is give us specific reasons because if you if you look at the map, wetland five looks to be like a much larger wetland than wet than wetland thirteen. Are we choosing that just because we don't want people to build around it, or is there some other reason why we're choosing thirteen so, over five? May, may I um, read you? I, I did put together specific reasons for wetland um, thirteen. It's a short paragraph, and I could probably do something similar for the others. I, could I read it to you to see if it's what you want in terms of uh, your understanding? For 13, sure. For 13. Yeah. So of the 15 significant wetlands studied in 2004, Miller Pond, wetland 13, rated the highest for sediment trapping and nutrient attenuation functions, the second highest for ecological integrity, and the fourth highest for wetland wildlife habitat. It also was very highly rated for flood control potential for shoreline anchoring and noteworthiness, along with visual and aesthetic quality, and as an historical site. On the other hand, Miller Pond's current level of protection is extremely low, given that it has no abutting conservation land that excludes development, making it even more important to ex protect it through expanded buffers. <coughs> so that's I did that sort of focus in on that one because we were talking to the planning board about this one in terms of the variance. I haven't done something similar for the other ones. Is, but it, does that satisfy what your need is in terms of understanding our focus on a particular wetland? Or do you want different a different type of... Um, Humphrey, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, the fact that you talk about because it doesn't have conservation land is the yep. key that says you're artificially creating conservation yeah. land. No, we're artificially... No, you're trying to... Virginia, I'm just saying, that's how it that's reads. How it's going to be perceived because it's not doesn't out. have conservation land that you're only changing... And I'm not saying that's what your intent is. Yeah. It reads right. that the only reason you're doing it is to artificially create more conservation land. Yeah. That is exactly how that reads when you put that in there. Because it doesn't have conservation land, it's not protected. <coughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I do everything I can to protect my land, and that's not in conservation. And I know other people that do the same thing. So those words definitely don't fit it because it doesn't have conservation land. If it doesn't have naturally protected areas to help cause problems with it, where sediment can go in or it can create leach back into the Salmon Falls River, causing more problems downstream, those types of words are very specific because coming back to Tony's point, if you look at Wetland 5, that's a huge issue because it's close to the Lockhart Field issue, which will cause more problems for Salmon Falls River and everything else if that doesn't have certain things done to it. So to me, I, I don't think you want to say because you're only looking at targets that don't have conservation land yeah. around well, it, that's got to be I, I the read importance. Through this of whole list of functions right. that were very yep. highly rated on that. Yep. That you know, we were we were balancing both in yep. our discussion okay. certainly, and 
Yeah, Karen. Um, yeah, and, and, and to kind of ping pong uh, off of that, you know, you're, you're, you're also using the word of limiting development and that type of yeah. thing. That to me just screams negativity. But the other thing also is, you know, there's ones that you've chosen. I'd like to know, like you outlined there, why they were chosen. But I'd also like to know why some of the larger ones, especially ones like over an aquifer or whatever, were not chosen. Right. Yeah, probably, I, I can't look at, so, okay, so also list the negative, probably they were lower rated in the function. Um, but, but that's the kind of, what makes but, these but four I, so special? Right. As opposed to, and I, I, I did list that for this, but I, yeah, I, we can go back and look at any of this material that you haven't sent me in the past. If you could send it to me, uh, I'll make sure that the planning board uh, either gets it or it gets folded into whatever I prepare. So I, I did send the list of functions and values, which are characteristic of each wetland. It's a table. It's kind of hard to read. Um, and that's why, you know, we did that. It, it, it looks like, thank you, Bob. It looks like these two things that I sent you. And you can go down each numbered wetland and look, oh, okay, the function eco means ecological integrity. Number one was this score, you know, it goes all the way across. But we did that work for you, but I, I can summarize it for the, for the one. Did, did I hear the phrase uh, ecological integrity? Yes. <coughs> okay, um, ecological integrity is a fox that has switched to a cereal diet. Sorry, I don't get <laughs> In other words, it's not what eating some of the natural stuff that's out there. What is integrity? It, it, the fox has decided that it will not, it will not kill rabbits. Okay, it probably it, it means that it doesn't have invasive plants in it, for one thing, that, it's, that it is in still in the state in which it was naturally grown rather than having been altered by nearby either development or, or disruption. I, I do think we've beat the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, out of this. And I'd like to just know what the next steps are going forward and kind of wrap it up if others don't mind. <laughs> yes. Right on board with it. Uh, so what, you're going to write something up. I'm going to continue to work on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not going to go out of, out of order. No. We, did, we went out of order tonight, but it, it's good to get that. Yep. The two questions answered. You want to go with the four prime priority wetlands and change the buffers? I said yes. I heard that. Uh, I think it's I will, yes pending additional draft. information. <laughs> <laughs> I will develop it's not a unanimous yes. <laughs> and uh, obviously there will be continued discussion. Yep. And then the Conservation Commission is going to get us details on why those were why those were chosen and, and, and then we'll revisit we'll revisit that aspect of, of the order and i was going to state that for the balance of what we've got in here that in our next meeting and beyond so that you're not like yeah the next two weeks get us all of this stuff i think we move forward with what we are working on here and then come back yeah. as it comes up and revisit the priority area because it is important I, oh, yeah. I would like to add that I think understanding what the what the overall impact without beating it as, as Karen says and the downstream effects mm -hmm. because in each of the ones you talked about as you were describing in here Virginia you talked about like Miller Pond turning into Miller Brook which comes into the Salmon Falls River that's where impacts and everything else because you can also then take that down into the Great Bay estuary and the whole thing and everything else that's come down in but I also think that when you look at what other downstream effects it have, my personal understanding of everything that we have for impact in town is why I'm very surprised with that with the aquifer and everything around Wetlands 5, why that wasn't higher than even Wetland 13. I mean, because to me, it's not just protecting it from development. And I think that's the real key to a priority wetland is not because of development. It is to ensure that the integrity of the land does not get degraded. Mm -hmm. So, okay, all right. So, so, that's, so, that's so we can we can get into that. I think yeah, with no, the, I just think that's what they need the to road. give us for info. That's all. It's, po it's possible. I don't know 
specifically, I think this may be true of Southern Pine. I know there's some wetlands on here that are almost entirely surrounded by conservation land. It would be a moot point to extend a buffer around them because they are not going to be developed anyway. So that, I mean, that reason for not including them is... And, and you know, if that, maybe that's another thing to add to your list right. to show us that which these is, weren't chosen because okay. they are completely so surrounded by one. conservation. So. And then, of course, some of them have, you know, a third or, or you know, whatever. And, and it's not as if, well, uh, so conservation right, so. land automatically means a big, a huge buffer. That's all it means. Yep. You know, that's, that's how you can think about it. Conservation mm -hmm. land is a really big buffer. All right. Well, I, I would like to thank all of you guys for, mm -hmm. for your work. The Conservation Commission's done to get to this point. Um, and I think we got a good direction forward, and we'll, we'll continue okay. the discussion Thank you. with okay. more information. We appreciate your interest and your willingness to consider it. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'll move on to other business. Do we have any other business? I'll move on to planner comments. Okay, I got two comments. Uh, number one. <clears throat> uh, I did send you an email uh, earlier today. You might not have seen it yet. You might not have been home yet. <laughs> it's, uh, it's about uh, our other major task uh, this year, and that has to do with the starting to work on the community facilities chapter of the master plan. Uh, you know, we all, uh, we all have agreed that the town budget doesn't allow for the budgeting of any money that could go towards a consultant assisting with this. And so you instructed me to go look for grant opportunities uh, to do this. Uh, I found what I thought was a great grant opportunity, but in speaking with the grant administrators uh, at the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, uh, they wagged their finger and, and shook their heads at me and uh, Jen Sizz from uh, Stratford Regional Commission, Planning Commission and said that it would not be looked upon uh, as the most eligible grant application because it was just for one community doing one master plan. It was not focused on community facilities that were important to the community themselves. So we had to do a kind of a, not a 180, but a, 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 a 110 <coughs> degree turn on this one. Uh, what I saw was an opportunity to do some of our community uh, facilities master plan chapter work, while also doing the planning and implementation steps that rarely get done in this town uh, and have both Regional Planning Commission and consultant help on this. Uh, so the three facilities uh, that were chosen after much discussion uh, are, are the Milton Town Beach, the Milton Townhouse, and this facility here, which includes the land itself and what's going to happen to it afterwards. You know, there's already been discussion about what could happen, but there's missing pieces in the public outreach the planning uh, and the consultant work that, that we can get for free if this grant is chosen. Well, I believe it will be. Uh, this is a great opportunity for Milton, and it's a great way to kill two birds with one stone. And, uh, uh, and, and obviously, you're, you're the board that told me to go out and look for a grant like this, maybe not like this, but a grant that would move us towards our master plan chapter. Uh, it gets us incrementally there, but there's other, there's other things. Now, why is this wonderful? It's wonderful because there is absolutely no money due to the USDA as local match, zero dollars. And the grant will be awarded to SRPC and we are a recipient of the grant because the grant, was, the grant is written frankly, so that it will get accepted. It's not just Milton. It's Milton and Farmington. 
which is what they told us we should do. Mm -hmm. So we'll have nothing to do with the work in Farmington. And their budget will be their budget. Our budget will be our budget. Zero dollars from the town. It's a great opportunity. Take the opportunity when you get home to just go through that grant application. By the way, the deadline for, the, for getting the grant application in was today yep. at 4 o'clock. Yep. And it was the grant application uh, uh, that I assisted on <coughs> was completed just before 3. Wow. So it's a good yeah. thing we did that. There are no downsides to this at all, except possibly a little more work for, no, no. for me and maybe the planning board. But I know you're up for it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bruce. And oh, the second thing, real quick, just just very quickly, is that uh, you you wanted to know, and I heard you say it, you wanted to know about these priority wetlands and and which ones had conservation lands that were around them. Currently, we can't show that on our GIS until we ask our consultant to add our wetlands. We have the mapping. It was done by SRPC. So this will be a very inexpensive thing to do. Two, three hundred dollars. And I know we have that in our GIS account uh, to do. Once that's done, we already have all the conservation land mapped in our GIS. We'll turn those two layers on, and then we'll make a map that you can look at. <clears throat> so this might take a couple of weeks, but we'll get it done. Mm -hmm. I could just before we go, I want to just piggyback. I did go through the whole thing, and out of that, we get about 70% of the money, 65% of the money from Stratford Regional Planning's efforts for the training and everything else in the community. You were talking about in that grant, so it's definitely something well worth it. Uh, that well good. worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not just staff from SRPC doing this work. No, it's everybody else. They're hiring a consultant. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Pretty, pretty great. And that was over a three year period of time that they're going to put all of this together for us. Yes. Yep. All right. All right. Jen, everything? Did any? Good. Okay. Last item on the agenda. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's all Larry's waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> uh.